We are live. <laughs> what is up, everybody? Jess and Nick with Swan City Ceramics. Back at it. Been away for a few weeks, but we come back refreshed. We have a fully clean studio. Yeah, we redid the studio. <laughs> yeah, we did. <laughs> so we got brand new liner on the floor. We moved some stuff around. We got more space. It's more better. It's better. Yeah, it's more dynamic. It's perfect. So that's going to allow us to do more streams, too. Yeah. Because it'll just be easier, even though it's still really complicated to set up. Got to set up all these cameras. Yeah, how many cameras do we have? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, like five or six. But, uh, so, yeah, we're, this is a strictly business stream. Yeah, we're not goofing around. <laughs> True. We don't have much going on. We're working on this giveaway. Mm -hmm. So we posted a video uh, seven days ago, one week ago. And um, we are giving away this mug. Uh, when we hit 1K subscribers, last week we posted the video, I think we had the 850, and now we're at 952. We're really close. So only 48 subs away, which is awesome. And so we got 100 in the past seven days. So hopefully this week we can accomplish this feat and get these you know, this mug uh, shipped out to a lucky subscriber uh, and commenter on that video, our recent video that we posted. So we got the mug giveaway. <clears throat> um, what else? We have some new wholesale orders. Are you trying to do some shout-outs? I to, like, shout-out. Yeah, right, definitely. These guys are awesome. Um, this is the best shop name I think I've ever seen. Oh, really? It's called Little Shop of Soil. Oh, okay. that was really cute. Um, they ordered, and then so did Frond Plant Shop. Oh, yeah. And um, we shot them out last time. Nice. And South Park Pottery. Those are our newest orders. And that's what we're working on this week to fill in their orders and some Etsy orders. So, also shout out to our individual people that buy our products. Thank you guys so much. It's like Tate, Lauren, and Wendy. You guys are awesome. <laughs> All right, and shout out to. Oh man, I can't even read these names. Oh, just, just random YouTube names. Hottest X Trends. Thanks for subbing. <laughs> um, Rio Lou, Kevin Aubrey, Sarah Jazzy Jazze. She's that commenter. We kind of um, stalked her. She like lives in Alaska. Yo, so yeah, we did stalk you, Jazzy. <laughs> she's a confirmed, confirmed subscriber. And um, so yeah, shout out to the subscribers, shout out to the people ordering our stuff. Thank and you guys. Um, so uh, before we get into this pottery, we're, we're gonna start making some stuff. Yeah. Um, what else can we touch touch up, update? Um, so this next weekend on Saturday, we're gonna be in St. Petersburg, Florida, selling at Mezzo Market. So if you're down in St. Petersburg, you wanna come by and see our products in person, please come say hey. Just like, tell us, come say hello, we wanna talk to y'all. So. And we do that every month. Yeah. And you can find all uh, those dates on Instagram. Mm -hmm. In our bio, or you can sign up for our monthly newsletter on our website. So we send out a little blast at the beginning of the month, just giving y'all an update. Where we're gonna be, who our new shop shop um, stocked are? How do you say that? Where our products are gonna be stocked, so you'll be able to find us near you, which is pretty cool. So we got a lot of orders. We're kind of back behind, mm -hmm. and then get a situation where an order that we shipped becomes ninety percent broken. In the transit on the way there. That's so sad. It's... So um, we're gonna have to redo that. Yeah, they sent us all the pictures, sad and broken, but USPS has insurance on all of our packages, so we're gonna remake them for them. And it's all like four inch planters. So we've got a ton of four inch planters to make. <laughs> like 70 is on our list, 70 four inch planters. So is that what we're gonna do today? Um, today we're going to start with the local orders, try to get those. So we have some V60s, um, some spoon rests, and we're going to make charcuterie platters. 
at least the start of those, and then we'll get into some four inch planters. All right. Yep. So we're, we're 10 minutes into the stream. <laughs> so no content, unfortunately, no reactions. <laughs> Uh, strictly business uh, stream today. We're just going to be busting some stuff out. And, um, yeah, the biggest news we got going on is this uh, mug giveaway. Yeah. Here, so. check out this mug one more time before I put it away. But it's done in our triple melt glaze, so every time we make this one, it melts a little differently. So this one has little thumb handles. So you can hold it, like, perfect, just like that. But it's uh, pink, blue, and purple, and it melts it together. So, um, if you want to show it on the close up, um, yeah, got it in the video. Nice. So, that's what we're, um, gunning for right now. Trying to get this 1k subs. So, tell your friends, get a mug. And I'll, and 1K. I'll, and I'll tell you what, well, when we, when we hit 1k, we're gonna go live. And, um, and we're going to, um, do the whole thing live. So, we'll put all the names in like a random thing or whatever online and then we'll do it all live or whatever yeah i'm excited for that and um <laughs> there's a good chance that more than one mug might be given away oh my gosh <laughs> we got this so so uh stay tuned and uh and uh, look forward to watching that <laughs> keep keep an eye out for uh how many subs we got yeah and if you're not subscribed you didn't comment you got to do that right now subscribe and comment on that video that we linked below in the description so you can get entered to win this mug we'll ship it to you completely free so if you're not doing that i don't know what you're doing but you got to get on that all right yep all right let's jump into it so we started making some spoon rests a little bit ago we're just going to finish them up but our little mini spoon rests they're just three inches we have some balls of clay weighed out here so let's start throwing So, each one of these little guys is weighed out to four ounces. Yeah, and these are quick, so we're just gonna fly through these. So we center up our clay. Same. Right on the wheel here. So we get nice and centered. Coning up. Coning back down. And then we use our calibers right here, three inches wide. And uh, we account for shrinkage. So we use a little shrinkage ruler that tells us our 11%, 12% shrinkage. So that we make sure they're all the same size. Same. So that is exactly three inches. So we're just gonna compress center of the spoon rest, forming a little lip there. We don't want any kind of bubbles, so we're just gonna keep compressing. We don't want any cracks. Um, clean it up. And I like a nice like crisp edge, just like that. Then we come in with our tool here, kind of trim the bottom up all that extra clay out of the way. A little extra compression right there. Let's see. We're gonna add the little slot where the spoon rests. So how we do that is we just take a little bit of water in our fingers and slowly pull our clay back and forth, flattening out a little tiny surface. After we do that, we're gonna add a swirl. Just with our fingers, a little aesthetic swirl is really nice. I'm just gonna go in here, clean that up a little bit. Don't do too much in this stage or it gets mucky. But let's see. We're gonna wire this right off too. Perfect. Hey, we're gonna fly through these guys. Clean off our bat. Pop it right on. So let's just center this up. Just, go. 
Just gonna cone up once and push it down to get it really center on this wheel. There we go. Compressing down so we get ourselves into that three inch area. Nice. I like that little ledge right there. Just compressing the whole time. It's the main part. Pushing all this clay down. There we go. Trim this little edge. Nice. We're gonna add that little lip right here. Just softly moving our fingers back and forth. Pushing the clay in the direction we want it to be. Then we're gonna add our swirl. Just using the wheel as our tool. There we go. Perfect. We're just gonna wire it off. Center it up. Just gonna cone up. Press down, flattening it out. Nice. Trim up the bottom there. Let's make that little spoon rest spot. We just move back and forth with our fingers. Let's keep it kind of wet. It creates a perfect little dip. We're gonna get some extra water off of there and then add our little swirl. You don't even really have to do coning up and down on these, but it helps to get them centered. There we go. Compressing. edge. Take off that extra clay. I'm going to add our little actual part of the spoon rest here. There we go. A little dip. water off and then we're gonna go in with our wire tool one swift motion wired off it's extra goopy out of the way we're trying to make 12 of these and then three of them four of them will get stamped with a custom logo for a shop operation Lola And this is a, a remake too. Yeah, we um, 
we glaze them in our triple melt. And like we were saying, with the triple melt, it always comes out differently. So it ran pretty wild and covered up the logo. So we're going to remake them for them, send them out. Yeah, basically glaze what them a little was, different. because we layered them three times with glaze, mm -hmm. the glaze was so thick that you couldn't read the stamp. So we're going to do the stamp a little bit different and do the glaze a little bit different. And um, uh, yeah, it's just always a bummer when you make something and then, um, you know, by the time you pull it out of the kiln and then it's not good. And um, so, yeah, we already got her order shipped out. And uh, yeah. we talked about uh, Operation Lola quite a bit on Last here. time. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, a uh, really cool thing that they're doing out there. Check it out, Operation Lola. But, um, but, uh, yeah. So what, what do we owe them? Just two spoon rests. Two spoon rests, yeah. All right. So I'm gonna, we're gonna make four. If they all turn out, they're gonna get four. And uh, we'll see what happens. But yeah, if uh, we'll have to end up, we just have to change the way we're glazing, the way we're stamping, and it'll be okay. But thankfully, the people we work with are always, are usually like super nice, and she's totally understanding. This isn't usually. a, uh, yeah. Usually this is in a <laughs> got a couple characters out here some pottery uh bandits some pottery bandits <laughs> honestly um, sometimes that's like that's like let one percent yeah um, and um you know we disclose the information you know going into it it's a six to eight week you know turnaround so we give them we give ourselves enough time to uh usually make sure everything comes out at a good time yeah So uh, there's two more of these little spoon rests and then we'll make a few um, matcha bowls actually for a custom order as well. They wanted a medium, like a darker, deeper blue glaze. So we're gonna make them a custom glaze for a matcha bowl. So that should be pretty cool. Add this little dip. to um, get some of these videos cranked out so we can start to do other things because we want to make a bunch of videos about glazing and how to make it, how to do it, like, you know, everything about it. We've had people reach out on YouTube mm -hmm. asking them about our glaze and if they could buy it and stuff. And yeah, definitely. If you see a glaze that, you know, uh, we will we'll sell you it and we'll yeah. tell you how to make it. Um, yeah, so. yeah, we're here to help you. All right, last one. So we're just going to cone up, get it centered on the wheel, push down right in the middle. Flattening it out. Go into about three inches. Remembering compression the whole way through. Compressing the lip, the base, the center, everywhere. Go 
scooped up. I think um, we're gonna add the stamp onto these little spoon rests for Lola. So, let's see. I have this custom stamp over here. We've done this before for a few people. But it's a 3D printed stamp. We get it online um, on Etsy. I don't know if you can, can you see that on there? Uh, yeah. Yeah, so it's got their little logo, Operation Lola, the little piggy. Um, so like to do the stamp while the piece is still kind of wet, but because it's wet, I don't want it to stick to the stamp and inside all the crevices. So I'll pretty much coat this piece in like a cornstarch or a baby powder. Oh, what do we got here? We got baby powder right now. So I'm just gonna kind of top it around. We do this with our stamp for the bottom as well, the Swan City Ceramic Stamp, just in case there's any tackiness left. There we go. All right, so we're gonna try to line up this guy right in the center. Just press down firmly, back and forth. Pull it up. All right, you see that? Nice. So because it was pretty wet, it didn't take too much to really push down into the stamp, which is why I like doing it at this, this stage. I'm gonna go through and just recut this off as well. I definitely, it'll end up sticking to this board again. There we go. So we've got four of these I'm gonna do pretty quick here. Let's see. So again, baby powder. And center this guy up. When you press down on the stamp, you just want to teeter-totter it back and forth. The stamp this size, I only go one direction, but our little circle one, we kind of go forward and side to side. But it's a pretty big stamp, so. It's cute. Yeah, so this is a size for our two and a half, or our three inch spoon rests, but we actually did one for an apothecary shop as well. That was for our five inch, our five inch spoon rest. So you can see the difference in that size there. It's pretty crazy. So this was um, full craft and floral, flora, full craft and flora. And they have them right now. Um, they're forest green spoon rests that they sell, that's pretty cool. So now we're just gonna baby powder it up again. Line it up. Pressing down, back and forth. Nice. How um, confident are you that we need uh, two extras? 100% confident. It's two, um, two orders of the triple melts. They did sets. So they had gotten five sets in total, one black item and then two turquoise and two triple melt. So. We'd owe them two triple melt spoon rests. But two triple melt spoon rests? Yeah. And how many are you gonna make? Four. Do we need to do that though, is what I'm saying. Oh, do we need to make four? Yeah. Because typically the spoon rests don't, yeah. don't do you... break. Maybe just make one extra. Okay. Yeah, I can do that. And then this one we can leave for ourselves and I'll add a little swirl on there. <sighs> All right, let's see. 
How so. many did you stamp? You just stamped two, right? I did three so oh, far. Oh, you did three. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so. I'm just gonna go in and out our swirl then. And this one will be first. organized down in here. Get as much room as possible going. And we're gonna make two matcha bowls. So I had these weighed out as well right here, but the width of our matcha bowls are five inches by three inches. So we're gonna change our little caliber here to a five inch marker. I cannot see this at all. So this is our shrinkage ruler, and our clay shrinks about 11%. So we use the 12% side here and compare it with the 10% side as well. We're going for five inches, so let's see. That's right, and then the 10% side little more so you kind of have to go right in between the millimeter perfect Make sure that's tight I'm gonna put her stamp away as well oh we these stamps are owned by the companies if you're a business out there and you want a custom piece we get the stamp made for you and hold on to it as long as you want us to make your products but at the end of the day it's your stamp so we'll send it out to you if you want it for something different. All right. Nice and clean surface. Start the next section. Let's clean off our bat. These are weighed out to one pound and eight ounces each. I really like making bowls. Let's see how it goes. Cone up, press down, centering. Do it again. start with this mushroom shape and when we open this up we're gonna go to the bottom leaving about oh no there's something wrong with our clay here there's oh. something in our clay oh my god <laughs> it's a sponge again oh no there is a giant sponge in our clay Ah, that happens like when the sponge is in the bottom of the bucket and I throw the whole bucket in the reclaim bin. <sighs> what a bummer. All right, that's all right. We'll wedge this clay right back up. There we go, we got this one ready to go. Pop this guy right on, let's see. All right, matcha bowls. Gonna wedge up, press back down. Cone right back up. Try and just feel for the center of this wheel head. 
And then when you push down, you're pushing into the center, like a 45 degree angle. Slowly all the way down. It feels good. You're gonna slow it down a little bit. Open it up, leaving about a quarter inch on the bottom. Kind of opening it into a bowl form on the inside while keeping the edges cylindrical until we reach our desired height. But the inside, unlike a planter where we go completely flat, we're gonna keep this pretty round. Pretty round here, very round. And pulling up, compressing the lip. That water out of there. All right, so I'm gonna make a little divot down here and that's where we're gonna pull our clay up with our thumb. Slowly pushing that clay towards the center. Pinching it, bringing it all the way up. And then compressing the lip every time. So we wanna get this to about three inches tall. I'm gonna use another measuring tool over here. See. So, shrinkage ruler, we have another caliber right here, going for three inches. Ten percent side, and twelve percent side. So a little more height right there. Let's see. We wanna keep it concave as well in this stage so that we don't have any ex extreme flaring. Let's see, give it one more nice pull right here. There it is. All right. So our next step is to shape the walls of the bowl so that we can get ourselves to five inches. So I'm just gonna go pretty slowly. We're not doing any more pulls, we're just shaping. Opening up the bowl. Need to be a little wider, and I'm going to compress the bottom right now. My fingers can fit in there. Also, trying to solidify the bottom of this bowl's shape, so it actually looks like a bowl and not like. People, when you're learning in classes, they say don't make it look like a dog dish, like a pet bowl flat at the bottom. It's supposed to be round all the way through. That's however you want it to be, really. All right, we're gonna open this up one more time. Yeah, we do make, um, we do make pet bowls, and we need to make a pet bowl. Yeah, we do. Been meaning to do that. Yeah, our pet bowls we make um, with custom names on them as well. So you can have the, your doggy's name on the inside or the outside or even your cat or any other animal. Like a quarter inch more. 
We're leaving a lot of extra clay on the bottom so it has the stability to hold the bowl, but also for when we trim, we can have a lot more um, variability in what we want the foot to look like. So we don't, all the options at our disposal. But, yeah. That is good. Go. Just going to clean this up inside a little bit. Reinforce our compressed lip and add a tiny swirl. Let's take off some of this extra clay down here. Make sure it looks exactly like we want it to look. So these also get a little spout on the edge, but we're gonna wait till it sets up for a little bit before we add that. So, gotta weigh out some more clay right now. Let's see what we got going on. A fresh bag of clay to work with right here. Scale doesn't want to work. We're going for one pound, eight ounces for one more of these matcha bowls. It's about double what we need. One pound, seven, seven, three, seven point eight, and one point eight. Perfect. So let's just get this wedged up real quick. We're pretty much just pushing this into the shape that we want it to be when we start throwing. Kind of like a pyramid, cone, I should say. Bowl number two. We're coning up, we center our clay, we're pushing down. We're gonna do that one more time. Feeling for the center. little mushroom shape will start us off. Same. I'm gonna find the center, press down slowly. We're about a quarter inch from the bottom. And then we're gonna pull that towards ourselves and slightly up at the same time, creating a bowl shape on the inside. And pressing the lip. So we're trying to keep the outside cylindrical, but the inside round. We're gonna compress. The interior, we're gonna pull up one more time. Get rid of that 
water so we can see what we're working with. Alright, definitely needs to be higher. So. We press in to create a little room for our thumb to be underneath the clay. We're going to pull all of that clay straight towards the center. Then compress the lip. Let's see what's our height. A little taller. We want it to be three inches. Do one more pull like we just did. Thumb underneath, pushing all that clay straight up into the center. Compressing the lip. Let's pull this water out of here. We're gonna start flaring our piece out a little bit, shaping our bowl. Compressing the lip every time we do that. You hear, you hear that bird going crazy? <laughs> what is this problem? We have so many birds here. We saw a baby woodpecker. So cute. What bird do you think that is? Uh, not sure. It's not the squirrels, right? It's not the squirrels, no, I don't think so. I mean, it could be. I don't know too much yeah. about nature calls. I yeah, know you could just stop right there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're trying to get five inches here. Let's make this happen a little bit more. Opening bowls up is a slow process because if you go too fast, it'll just flop your clay or rip it. You wanna like take your time here. Crossing. All right, I think we might be there. Yes. It's probably a smidge more open. That is it. All right, let's take a look at it. Looks like I want the bottom to be a little bit more round. Should I get that going? Gonna take away some of this extra clay down here. We're gonna trim away and add a little tiny swirl, finger swirl. Yes. And the extra water, should we get rid of it? have gotten through 12 mini spoon rests and two matcha bowls. We gotta do two V60 coffee pour overs, six butter bells, and five charcuterie cherries. So let's see, let's do these V60s. 
Those are each going to be two pounds each. So let's get this weighed out quick. Try to get it as close as possible to our two pounds to keep us consistent. And then we can wedge it, wedge it on together. So. One point twelve, two three. We're just going to wedge this together. A lot of the times you're wedging to push out any air bubbles, but in our case, we got freshly, fresh bag of clay, so there's no air bubbles in here. We're just kind of pushing the clay back together. cones so we have a good starting spot when we throw to cover them up with some uh, wet paper towels too so they don't dry out so we have fan going in here to keep us cool the bird is upset Clean off our bat here. So for our V60s, we use this tool that we made. Um, it's a 60 degree angle tool. So for the interior, once we open it up, we can make sure that we have the correct angle for the pour over. Oh, let's start again by centering. We're gonna cone this up. Press back down. there's two parts here. We want to keep a chunk of this clay on the base so we have a lot more to trim away. So what I like to do is about half an inch, I'll like push another section, kind of split these in two so I know how much clay I'm leaving down here and compress that down. For me, I know it's about the width of my thumb. Probably about half an inch. So, just compressing this bottom part. Slow this down. We're gonna find our center. We're going all the way down to the bottom. Somebody saying, uh, hi, uh, Vid, Vid Hushni, Vid Hushni, hi. Hi. And, um, looks like a couple of people like this stream, so oh, shout nice. out to everyone. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks for popping in. But right now, we are making V60 pour overs. We're making two of them, little coffee makers. We got an order, um, on our website on Etsy. So... Right now we're creating the cone. We're gonna pull it all the way up. 
far as it can go. And I think I have the dimensions written down here too. Four and a half by three and a half. So I'm gonna try to get this about three and a half inches tall. Let's see. Definitely a little taller. So even though we want this to eventually flare out while we're gaining our height, you want to keep it as straight as you can, if not concave, so that you don't have to deal with collaring extra flare down the road, compressing the lip every step of the way. Start shaping it and getting it as close to our 60 degree angle as I can. Compressing our lip every time. And as you flare it out, you want to lower the speed of your wheel because it'll end up aiding and flaring this piece in directions you don't want it to go. some of those extra little bits down here that I know I'm not gonna need. And then this is where our other tool comes into play. So this is our 60 degree angle. It's just a piece of MDF board that we cut and this is the bottom opening that we wanna keep. So I'm just gonna slide this right into play. It smooths out the interior, but just allows us to have the correct angle. So go in and I'll just smooth everything out with our fingers. Do one last compression on that rim. And then on the inside, I like to go in with a small tool, kind of just do some pre-trimming. I've lost my tool. That's okay, I'll use this one. Just go in, just carve away a little bit there. Carve away a little bit here. So we did two styles of these V60s. This one that we're making right now is the straight pattern. And then we also have one swirl where we go and we add a big swirl of the cone. Those are really nice as well. Helps with airflow when you're brewing. But it's totally your preference on how you brew your coffee. Get like super deep into it. Now we do have a tutorial on how we brew coffee in our V60s. Do you know where that's at? Nick? Um, yeah, we only have like uh, three or four videos, actual videos posted on our channel, and that's the first one. But oh, nice. That was done a long time ago, <laughs> and um, really, we just really need to redo it. Oh, yeah, true. Um, put a real thumbnail on it and mm -hmm. uh, have a better, better version. Yeah. Um, it is up right now um, because we've told a lot of people about it mm -hmm. and we've directed people to it over, you know. But um, yeah, gonna have to redo that one too. Let's see. I'll pop this one right over here, let that dry. Let's make one more of those.
You want to make sure this is as flat as possible when you start off on your bat or right on the wheel so there's no air between the clay and the item you're throwing on. That's why I like to give it a good smash. Centering, pushing back down. Back up. Back down. All right. You can do this as many times as you need to to get this clay actually in the middle. Slowly push it back down. All right, so I'm gonna push that bit right in to the middle. I know I want to section this off to two pieces. Let's slow this down a little bit. We're just gonna take some time here and compress the bottom lip. This is the part of the V60 that sits on top of your cup. So it'll end up getting a ridge underneath of it. We leave enough clay down here so we can trim that ridge in. All right. Gonna find the center here, and push down slowly all the way to the bottom. Shape this right back up. Go a little faster here. We're making the cone part of the V60 where the coffee goes in. But we're starting right now, just getting our height. We want it to be three and a half inches tall. And then we can really shape it up. Let's see. Where are we at here? Just about. Pull it and flare it at the same time. Compress the lip. I'm just gonna keep flaring this piece till we can get the 60 degree angle that we're kind of looking for. Press that lip every single time. There we go. Clean up some of that. Let's slow it down a little bit and do it one more time. I'm gonna make sure you're actually down here looking at your piece. Some people use mirrors, that's good too. Just wanna really get the right angle. Our tool here. Make sure that 
we have the right angle that we're looking for. I'm gonna clean it up a little bit. I was kind of thinking, Nick, that we could ask, I mean, this is just like a little piece of MDF that I cut out that we got, that we fixed up out of one of these bats, but we could ask um, our friend Caitlin at Astral Creations to make us one. That's like smooth on the edges. Um, yeah. She's dope. They make these uh, little plant propagations. Can you see that in the thing or no? No. E plant propagations. They're good people. All right. Softly just push this all the way to the bottom. You can see it took some of the clay out. It smoothed out the piece exactly how we need it to be, just to the right angle. A lot more on this side, you can see. But I'm just going to scrape that on off. Go in with a sponge and just make sure it's all smooth. And look at our exterior as well and make sure it's also just as nice as the inside. Lost a little tiny tool somewhere. I wonder where it could be. Let's see. All right. Cut away some of this extra clay down here that we're going to trim away. And then also inside here, just create a little divot to get us started when we start trimming. I'm going to wire this guy off as well. I think I want to jump into charcuterie boards. They need to be made and I need to make a bunch of them. So these charcuterie trays are pretty big. Let's see what I have here. Five pounds, four ounces, and they are 11 inches wide. So because this form is so wide and so heavy we're actually instead of using our chamois we're gonna put some clay down right on the wheel so that our bat is secure and really sticks to the wheel head i don't want anything slipping and sliding anywhere with something this size so we're gonna hang up our chamois over here for later we're gonna weigh out five pounds of clay i think we're gonna make four of them Get our wire tool over here. Slice our whole brick in half. We're going to slice each. Let's see what this is. All right, we're looking at nine pounds, 11 ounces. Let's cut this right in half. Four pounds, 15 ounces. I'm just gonna add a little bit more. Too much. Five pounds. 
ones. What about this one? Four pounds, 13 ounces. There it is, five pounds. So we got two. This big guy. 10 pounds, seven ounces. So let's see if we can get as close to the middle as possible. Five pounds, three ounces. That's pretty good. Take a little bit away. I like to pull off the extras off those edges so it stays kind of in a round form. There we go. Four pounds, 13 ounces. Five pounds. All right, so we're just gonna wedge these guys up a little bit. Just shaping them into the desired cone form that we want it to be. to dry out. So I'm going to cover them up as we make them. Not great. Sorry. We're just using a spiral wedging technique to get all of these pieces into cones. So they're easier to throw and center. Wedging also helps to like disrupt all the clay particles that have been sitting around. They're pretty stagnant. So it makes the clay a little softer too, which is not definitely needed. some fresh water for our bucket. Right now it's all sloppy. There's a lot of just like slip clay. I'm gonna pour it into our reclaim bucket. Not our sponges, like I did last time. So 
all the clay that's in this bucket is just from trimmings or pieces that we that didn't make it to the firing stage, we can just smash them all up, put water on here. And then once it soaks up all the water, we kind of mix it up and then put it onto this plaster bat all the way down at the bottom here. Sucks all the water out and then we can wedge them right back up and then use all of that clay again. All right, I'll be right back. I'm gonna get some water. Alrighty. I'm doing a bunch of stuff in the background here, but I'll take a break too. Look how much space I have now. Uh, I'm still adjusting all the camera angles and everything. sure that our clay balls over here won't dry out. We have these paper towels that we reuse. extra clay back into the bag as well. Right. I'm going to take a little bit and create kind of like a sticky bat situation on our wheel head. Let's see. I don't need too much. But I'm going to center this up. a nice disc. Now we do this because our wheel head that we have doesn't have any bat pins in the sides. So the bottoms of our plastic bats have grooves for pins, but it depends on your wheel. Ours, get around that by doing this little Clay disc. Right. This is our big bat, 11 inches. We're just going to center it up on our wheel head. Kind of give it a nice tap into place. These bats have grooves on the back. So, what they'll do is they'll form right into the clay and then allow us to throw something larger without slipping and sliding anywhere. Just want to make sure it is level. All right, let's clean it off. All right, so I'm uh, organizing the playlist and everything. Mm -hmm. And this is official episode nine. So that means next time we're gonna have to do something special <gasps> Ooh. for episode 10. Episode Actually, 10, what? it'll be the uh, giveaway stream for sure. <gasps> that would be amazing, yes. Most, most likely it will. Episode 10, mug giveaway stream. We gotta get these 48 subs though. Yes. The, sh the short didn't do, didn't pop off or nothing to. Please subscribe, guys, <laughs> if you're watching, please. We'll get there in a couple days. <laughs> yeah. But that'll be cool. That might be uh, the 10th, uh, and we'll have to do something special for the 10th uh, stream, too. Yeah. Think about it. Nice. 
All right, so would you want to get the charcuterie board and show what it looks like finished? Where is it? Downstairs. Um, you can pull up a picture, I think. Yeah, pull a picture. <laughs> oh, man. Pretty much it's a large flat item, three rows of um, container space for your jams and your jellies and your cheese and your pitas, your crackers, and it's a larger flat plate. So we want to get this chunk of clay kind of in a flatter position here. So I'm going to smash it into place. Got it pulled up, right? Got it pulled up. Nice. It's awesome. How do I zoom in? But where's the? Uh, it's like Control Plus. Where's the plus sign? And I can never find it. <laughs> Literally. I don't know. By the um, delete up there. Box space. All right. Oh my God. I'm gonna smack this into position. All right. It's been Dude, a while. I can't fucking find it. I swear. <gasps> You want me to come over there? Yeah. Got you. Oh, oh that, uh, yeah. Yeah. It's a tricky one. Okay, it's been a while since. So here's what it looks like. I got it. You got it? Yeah. Okay, nice. That's what we're going Took for. Took some awesome pictures. We, we uh, filled it up here. Yes, that was the best cheese Turkey, plate Turkey, grief, ever. pepperoni, uh, oh. apples, blue cheese. Oh my God, all kinds oh. of stuff. That, that's that such a right good now. picture, man, I love it. And here's another image of it. Here's one with no handle and the side handles. Yep, you have the option. This one's gonna have a middle handle. And um, yeah, we designed these a couple years ago and we haven't really revisited it, but I'm so happy with it. Good. Really, they're really cool. Nice. I actually have on my thing. Does it say on the website how large the plate is? Or y'all know what it says? I just asked it out. Oh, okay, that's all right. Here, I'm gonna do uh, it. Yeah, I have it here as 11 by 11. I just wanted to make sure that I was accurate. Oh, let's see. It's... says they are approximately eight by eight by two. The cheese plate? Oh no, I just changed. Professional uh, computer guy over here. <laughs> That's yeah, all right, I'm 11, having technical difficulties too. Scales like not working, so I'm gonna get a new scale. 11 by 11. What's that? 11 by 11. 11 by 11, good. All right, so this is actually our giant scale for shipping, but I'm having scale issues as well, so here we go. Um, yeah, I have five pounds, four ounces, so I'm gonna add four ounces to each of these. Let's see what I can do here. All right, I'm just gonna do that by Having this small amount here in a cone shape. I'm gonna look like an idiot for like a couple minutes in the stream here. I'm trying to adjust this camera. I don't wanna wait till it's. You're wait. okay. I'm sure all the people understand. Just gonna smash this into place. Let's see. So I'm just gonna try to adhere this to the wheel head before we start coning. You can see right here, we wanna get that really secure to our bat. And then we're gonna try to pull this guy up. Use a lot of power. So we're just pushing together at two different points at 45 degrees. So 
10 and 2. And we got the lawnmower. <laughs> Can you hear that? Cl ah. Close the window. The stream is chalked. Oh. I'm like trying to adjust the webcam. I can't even oh, no. find the bus button. Oh, babe. The birds are freaking out. The birds are good. I like the birds. Close the window, though, maybe. If it's bad. They are definitely doing construction next door. We got the lawnmower going, the birds, camera adjustments, scale issues, just a normal day. Normal, normal day. All right. Let's get this really centered. Just doing this little by little, step by step, slowly getting this centered. Kind of using my body weight here as well. We're gonna flatten it out. About the max that this wheel can do too. I don't I don't think I would push it further than five pounds. Let's see, we're gonna flatten it out. Just pull it towards us softly. Go. Keeping it flat on the wheel head so that no air gets in between the base of the clay and the bat, but we need to kind of plan now. This is gonna be sec three sectioned with a little nib in the middle where we attach the handle. So I'm gonna kind of, let me get this a little flatter, but the end section needs to have the most clay. So we're gonna carve out the center where we're gonna create a spot for our handle to be attached. So, have a little nib here. And this is going to be our first well for honeys and jams. Let me create this well, pull it out, compress the bottom. I'm gonna to try to keep all of our edges, our um, yeah, our lips here to be the same height. So I'm gonna push this side down as well. And you can see our first well is being created. We're just doing a lot of compression right here, holding it in place, making sure our walls all right, I'm nice done. Straight. Hmm? Fucking ruining this shit. Oh no, what's going on? Uh, <laughs> can I help you? I'm just not contributing to the stream right now, and I'm trying to fix this. That's and okay. I, I want to fix it, but I'm just—I'll oh. have to do it later. It's okay. I'm gonna like flatten this area out a little bit more too. Let's see. First one keep it small right there. I'm gonna pull out our second well here. This first wall is kind of thick. I think I might try to thin it up a little bit. Push some of this clay back down to the bottom. We wanna keep all of our depths the same, our heights the same, and hopefully the width the width of each of our walls the same. That's the goal. So, 
This is our second well. There we go. Let's create this next wall. We're just going to push down on our clay slowly. Keep these walls kind of straight and pull this up. And compress our lip. Get any extra water out while we're doing all this. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this last wall is going to be rounded and it needs to be 11 inches. So let's get our ruler out. Let's measure 11 inches. Might've done already. No. Nine, 10, 11. It is almost the max of our calibers. That is nuts. So we need to overhang the bat itself by a little bit. So we need to go maybe an inch off of the bat. Let's see what we can do here with our first, first run at this cheese plate. Trying to keep the base pretty thick. Our walls the same height. And we want this last lip to be more of a bowl than a straight wall like the other ones. Pull it up straight. Kind of compress the lip. Gonna pull some more out from the bottom. The wider the bowl gets, the slower you need the wheel to go too. That's what we were talking about with the matcha bowls. That's very important when you get to something this size. You don't want to go very fast at all. So let's see. I'm gonna compress our bottom, press our base. Creating our bowl shape. We wanna get the same height as the other two, compressing the lip. So a little bit of overhang here, let's say. Needs to be a little bit bigger, but we'll see what we can push this at. Push this to. I want this middle ridge to be a little bit larger as well, so we can put more cheese in here. Let's see. So I pushed the clay up more into a straight pattern here so I could get a little more height. And then I'm gonna flare it out again. So right here. the bottom of it out a little bit more as well but I'm feeling like this is a stopping spot right here 
you can really feel when the clay is telling you there's no more, no more to go. I don't have anything left, so I don't want to push it so it falls. It is looking really nice, and I'm just going to clean up any of the water that's in here, straighten out my two inside walls. So once these are dry, we come into the middle and the, these first two wells and we add little dividers so that you can mix and match what you put into your board platter. And we do that probably in a few days from now, maybe next stream. This first one is definitely a little too tall, but I'm gonna deal with that once we're trimming. All right. Let's see. This tool here, I'm just gonna go in, trim that little bottom line right here. Perfect. And we're gonna go in with our wire tool it's okay. I'm gonna go with our wire tool and we're gonna wire this whole thing off. So I need to know where my fingers need to be placed. Kind of like right there. While it's spinning, it'll be super taut, hopefully while it's spinning. Come all the way down through. Be spinning a little faster, but it's a big piece in one motion. Cut it right off so it's nice and flat. We're gonna set this guy up so he can dry out. I'll put them kind of under the fan. So you can see kind of where all of the divots ended up. So this next one, I'm gonna to try to get different divots so that it really is secure. Yes, let's give it a few taps. Tap it into place. Make sure we're even. try to flatten this out again. I'm gonna do it on this tabletop here instead of smashing it like the first time around. So. Nice. gonna add four ounces because I messed that up earlier. So let's see. There it is. I'm just gonna take this, form it into a cone as well, and then attach the two points like that. I'm just gonna smash it down. This is also how you can throw very large if you have one piece on the bottom, center it up, and put another giant chunk on top of that and center that up. So you're like centering in pieces. Let's see what we got here. Push it straight down, 
get it really attached to this wheel head. So I'm kind of centering the top portion and then bringing the bottom portion in, centering that right underneath of it. body force here. Nice. There we go. We are making a giant cheese platter. So let's get this flatter. So from the first one, I learned that I left too much in the first section. So we're gonna try to remedy that here. We're going to leave a little nib right at the front for the handle to attach. Press this area, open it up a little bit. Probably leaving about half an inch on the bottom here. All right. And we're gonna create this wall right here. Pushing down right next to it. So we're going to flatten out the part that we just pulled away as well. Bringing that piece down and over. Cleaning up. All right. So I want our depths to be the same. I'm going to open this up. Keep our depths the same, hopefully, and compress all the way. Pressing our lip and our walls, trying to keep these straight angles. Definitely need more area here for jams, so I'm gonna open that up. There it is. All right, let's flatten this area out see how much clay we've got left. Alright. So let's create another wall right here. Push down. Separating out our clay. And the depth's the same. Pull up this wall a little bit. Keep it straight. We're going to pull out our last section as well. 
compressing the whole way down. Pull this straight up. Let's see. Nice. I want to go into this one and make these walls very straight. So let's do that right now. middle one definitely needs to be bigger. So let's try to pull it over a little bit. Yeah. Here we go. Last one, compress down, pulling out. We're gonna try to pull this up to create our height first and then we'll open it up to more of a bowl shape. Pressing. Right. I'm going to use this edge here, all this extra clay down here, pull it up and out. Last little pull. There we go. Right. Just gonna clean it up, and set it to the side. Get any extra water out that would just be sitting around. Our little dip right there. And we're gonna go in and wire this off. So, like I said, we gotta know where our fingers are gonna be. Right there. Holding it taut. Hopefully, one clean swipe all the way down. There it is. Sit this bad boy up here as well. So. And attach our bat to our wheel head. Make sure it's really on there. And then make sure it's level. back into the shape that we want it to be. Get that nice and centered on our wheel head. Pushing down the edges so there's no air between the clay and the actual bed. We're gonna add our four ounces that we need to add. All right. Smash 
that right on top. All right, let's center it up. Little guy. I wish I could cuddle him all the time. Just woke up. Really? Mm-hmm. We should have special desk snacks for him. There we go. Woo, I'm making a mess. So once we get a nice disc shape, this thing's gonna be 11 inches. So start out pretty big. We're going to create our center nib where our handle attaches right in the middle and this adds just like extra support to the entire dish by having this piece attached instead of just attaching the handle straight into the center our center area, create a small wall. Now we're trying to be conscious. We're making three walls, so the last wall needs the most clay, so it'll be the largest wall. So this first one, keep kind of small. We want them all to be the same thickness and the same depth. That's the idea. All right. Let's create our second well here. Pull out all our clay at a 45 degree angle. Let's fix up this wall a little bit. I'm gonna push it down so I can kind of push it over and then pull it back up. water out of this area so we can see the actual depth and the further out away from the center we get the slower we got to make this wheel head spin so we're gonna pull this a little bit more keep everything nice and even there we go. compressing along the way we're gonna start our second wall just going to separate our clay out right here forming another well and then we can pull our wall up a little bit nice smoothing out everything there we go so let's 
go ahead in here and just create a compression for our third well so we can pull a little bit more up on our second wall. Compressing the lip. little pull up, compress the lip, and go in and clean up these edges too. Alright. And create the wells depth. And then we're going to pull this wall straight up. So this should be the largest wall. Let's see. Yep. Creating a little dip so we can get our hand under there. Grab that clay. Slow down a little bit. And we're going to pull straight up. Press the lip. Now we're going to flare it out. That's what we want. We want this to be 11 ish inches. So, so let's get all this water out. See how close we can get. Nice. It's the best one yet. Oh yeah, right at 11. Go ahead and wire this off. We want it to be right there. Keep this straight as we can get it all the way through. There it is. One sweep. What is he doing? Right, I'm coming over. Hold on. Oh my gosh. He's got his mouth open. What is he doing? Really? Oh my god. I can't I could you him right now. <laughs> yeah, he's the best. <laughs> Alright. I'm gonna do this last one here. So these bats, the last ones that we have, they don't have any ridges. So I'm just going to wet this a little bit so that it sticks onto our flat bats. Let's see. I'm gonna get this centered. It's not too bad. Let's give it a few taps like we did before. Make sure it's level as well. Definitely higher. Right there. Alright, let's clean this off.
right, last charcuterie board, and then I think I'm gonna take a little break. Get some coffee and some uh, snack. as possible. How long have we been in the stream? Two hours. Two hours, yeah. It's feeling like two hours. <laughs> right, charcuterie platter. Five pounds, four ounces. We are adhering our clay to the wheel head by smashing it down, getting make sure all these corners have no air between the clay and the actual bat. And we're gonna add a little bit more, add the four ounces that we forgot. Five pounds, four ounces. Perfect. It's actually crazy how much of a difference this four ounces makes because last time we were making these, that last Flare wasn't making the 11, 11 inches. So really need this little bit of extra clay. Just smash it right on top. No air in between. Perfect. Let's get this centered up. Pushing at two opposite angles, either to the left or the right, pushing that clay together towards the middle creates a coning. And it pushes the clay towards the center, but also pushes any air bubbles right up and out. So this is all fresh clay. We shouldn't have any issues with air bubbles, but we do got to get this guy centered. Tippy toes. Just straight down, but let's get some more. There go. What's going on? Piece centered and flat. I'm gonna flatten it out a little bit more. I'm gonna make sure we're not trapping any air in these edges. So I'm kind of doing this technique a little differently. Pushing down, rounding the corners, pushing that clay out. There we go. Let's see what we got here. We are going to create this little middle nib. Just by pushing down around the center This is where the handle will get attached. We want to leave about a half an inch at the base, pull the clay towards ourselves, opening it up, and then we're going to create a little wall. Our first wall, this first well, can hold jellies and jams, honey, any, anything you want. Let's see. Some compression. Compressing down, lining up our wall. We're gonna create our second well here. So we're gonna pull it 
towards ourselves, compressing. Let's, see, let's fix up our first wall. Compressing the lip. Get our inside nice. Go. Flatten out the remaining part of our tray. We need the second wall, about right here. So we're gonna create the third well. I have enough water going on here. So create our third well. Pressing, we're gonna pull this wall up. Compress the lip. So we create a nice divot, nice well here. For our cheeses. First one is definitely too high, unfortunately. Cut a little bit of that off. Go. All right, we are gonna compress our third wall base. Press it down, create our well, slow this down, create our wall. So we're just gonna go straight up first. Press the lip, I'm gonna do it again, picking up all this clay from underneath here. Flare it out a little bit. Compress the lip. I'm gonna make sure there's enough room down here at the base. Keep our well thicker. And softly pull up this wall one last time. Smooth out the bottoms and the rims. Let's see. Create a little divot here. Ah! All right. And we are going to slice this right off. Keeping it really taut all the way. Don't lose the angle and pull it right on out. Kind of want this to be more bowly, so I'm just gonna hit that real quick. Nice. All right. It's harder to pop off. There we go. 
I'm out of room already. All right, put this down here. All right, I think I need a little bit of a coffee break. Right. What do you think? Um, yeah. yeah, do you want, is that okay? Yeah. We'll just come back 15 minutes, is that okay? Yeah. We'll be back in uh, 15, 20 minutes. Thanks, guys. I got you back on the scene, but... It's okay, I'm just cleaning up this area. I, uh... I'm gonna just tweak this camera a little bit. Let's see, all of this stuff can go into the I was freaking muted when I tried to take a break anyway, so... <sighs> I have it before, like I had it good. Hmm.
minutes away. Mayors eats oats. Just got finished throwing 14 bases from two pounds of clay. Awesome. Very cool. We are on a little potty break right now, but we are about two minutes away from um, coming back up here and restarting. Uh, we got uh, like two to three more hours to do, so we're going to be streaming for a couple more hours. Um, but just bear with us. We're about two minutes away from starting it back up.
warming up in here. The PC running, <clears throat> working. It's pretty hot here. Just put the AC on. And we are a couple minutes. I said that a couple minutes ago, but he's on the way up. A little turkey sandwich. mini spoon rests, two V60s, two matcha bowls, and four cheese platters. So now that we've had a sandwich, some coffee, I think um, I'm gonna add these little, these are little matcha bowls that we made earlier and they need pour spouts. So let's throw these pour spouts on real quick before we get into another form. Uh, we're just gonna take like a wet finger, hold, the rim of the piece, slowly back and forth, pull out a little spout. We're just stretching the clay slowly. Perfect. So, make sure our rim is still where we want it to be. with one hand, softly stretching the clay with the other hand, going back and forth. These are gonna be a custom color. We're doing a dark blue for somebody that wanted custom blue matcha bowls. So you can always DM us if you want something special just for you. You have an idea of something that you want for your house. Like we'll make you anything. So hit us up. So. The next custom item that we're gonna do for somebody is a little olive oil bottle. One of our regular customers, she said that her olive oil dispenser broke so she wants us to make her a new one we're happy to do some stuff like that for y'all just trying to get everything as close together as possible so we have the most room to make more stuff so I got a lot to do. I'm gonna make six butter bells, two small hanging planters, 18 small tabletop planters, and 74 inch planters. So, let's do small hanging planter. That's two pieces. Same. 
The top is one pound and nine ounces, and then the bottom is one pound, so let's weigh these guys out. Get everything set up. Uh, we need two one pound balls. Gonna a little more than two. It's one. sections that are one pound and nine ounces. Let's do it. Got our fresh clay block over here. Let's see what we're working with. Two pounds, three ounces. One pound six, pound seven, one pound eight, one pound nine, please. Got it. Go two, three, one seven, one eight, one nine. Okay. Um, let's also weigh out these six butter bells, which are two pieces as well, one pound for each side. So we need 12 one pound balls. So nice using fresh clay straight out of the bag. Feels good. Needs wedged it. Let's see. One pound. these guys we're gonna wedge up this one I don't want to dry out so we're gonna cover these up uh, let's see. Just keep on going one pound one ounce one pound one ounce okay. whoa one pound if it's fresh out of the bag and I can get it to be exact just, I won't wedge it up. I'll just form it into the shape, especially the size. I'll be ready to go. Let's see. Getting pretty good at this. Just about one pound. There it is. So, how many did I say we need? Six butter bells. So, we've got to get 12 of these balls going. Two, three, Four, five, six. We're about ready to buy more clay. We get all our clay from St. Pete, high water clays. It's right here in Florida and they get all their clay from North Carolina. That's like pretty cool.
And we are down to about 100 pounds, and I think we buy 500 pounds at a time when we go to pick it up. But we have a ton of clay to reclaim. There's a giant slab down here full of reclaimed clay, and then our bucket is full again too, so that's really like more than 100 pounds total as well. Eleven. Go to twelve. All right. Let's just set this to the side. Open it. Get a little surface here. And just wedge all our stuff right on it. Let's see. Just kind of shaping the clay together. Wedging smaller amounts is so much easier than wedging like a giant chunk. Get these flipped out real quick. Definitely have to re wet our towels here too. We want to keep all the clay balls that we're making. Nice and moist, we don't want them dry out before we can throw them. So I like to cover them up. Some people use like a Tupperware as well. And this is what works for us. We reuse these paper towels as much as we can. Really are just forming these into cones so they're ready to go. go. Alright, so that's all for the butter bells. And then these two pieces are for our hanging planters. Separated here so we know what's what. Hanging planters on top. Dry. All right, 
we're moving back to our chamois here. It's this little piece of cloth that we use on our wheel head so that our bats don't slide all around. So we just make it nice and wet, and drape it over our wheel head because we don't have any bat pins on our guy. Smooth it out. And we are making two small hanging planters. Would you want to pull up a picture of what the hanging planter looks like? Nick? Uh, Would you want to pull up a picture of what the hanging planter looks like when it's like totally finished? Um, is that on the website? Yeah. Let's see here. So it's done as two pieces. It's a super special design. So it has a base plate with a small um, what would you call that? Like a little little guy in the middle, a little wall in the middle that holds the strings. And then the top is open in the middle so the drainage is hidden. And it all forms together. Of course. So you see it? Yeah. Nice. They're definitely one of our best sellers. Got some old ones on here. <laughs> really? I'll take some new pictures. Yeah, it's cool because you can keep it inside. If hmm? you can keep it inside. You said that? No, I didn't. Oh. Go ahead. Yeah. It won't a lot like. of like pottery hanging planters that you see. Typically, they don't have a base plate, so yeah. if you tried to water your plant, it would just drip all over the ground. Yeah. Nobody wants that. Right, these guys are. I don't have the dimensions. Do you still have the, do you have the dimensions over there? For what? The small hanging planter on the website. I think it's five. Every time you make me close the thing. I'm sorry. Go to the history. <laughs> I'm sorry. I think it's um, five inches. I'm going to write it down. The large hanging planter? <sighs> small, please. Five by five. Nice. If you want to tell me the large too, if not, it's okay. Seven by seven. Okay. My cheat sheet over here. All right, so let's go for five inch width here. We're gonna use our shrinkage ruler again. So our clay shrinks 11%, but our shrinkage ruler has a 12 and a 10. So let's see, five there. And look at the 10 side as well. Go right in between that millimeter. Perfect. All right, so we're gonna make the top first. It's a big sphere with an open bottom. So we're gonna start centering our one pound, nine ounces of clay. Push our walls together, right into the middle. All the way up. And back down. Nice. So we're gonna go and find the center and open this form up all the way to the bottom. Okay. Keep 
all our pieces nice and smooth. So once we're totally open at the bottom, we're going to leave about a quarter inch as a base and we're going to open that up. So it'll be a hole in the middle and then a quarter inch base. So found that quarter inch. I'm going to pull that softly towards ourselves. And along the way, I want to keep our shape really nice. I only want to open it about three inches, two and a half inches, because we want the majority of it to be the dome, the sphere itself. But I'm going to compress the bottom right here really well. Yeah. And then we're going to go ahead and start a pull. We're going to start with a cylinder. We go straight up, compress the lip. I'm going to do it again. Pull some out of the bottom, straight up, and press the lip. I'm just going to keep doing that, pushing that bottom edge in. Let's give it another pull. Straight up into the middle. Ideally, our walls have the same thickness from the bottom all the way to the top. I'll take a little bit off this top here. Just don't like the way it's wobbling. I'm going to do one more pull and then go in and start shaping it up. Grab all that stuff at the bottom. Straight up. Right there. going to get all this water out from inside, make sure it looks the way I want it to look. We're going to slow it down and start shaping this sphere. So our first push, there's no pulling anymore. We're just pushing really slowly right into the center and then bringing it back up. And each time I do this, I'm compressing the lip because we're changing it a little bit. Let's do it one more time. Pushing out all the way up. All right, ballpark estimate thickness. We are really about at five. So we are just gonna shape it up and make it look really, like a really nice smooth dome. Sphere. Let's see. Nice. Right there. Put a little more out here. Gonna get any water out from inside here. Just gonna trim up that interior hole that we made and leave a little bit right there. Just take a little bit off so we have a spot to put the wire tool through. A little bit of a guide. All right. Nice. I'm gonna slow it down and wire it off.
So that's the top. And then we put, once it's dry enough, we put three holes around the edges where the rope will go through. All right. We're gonna do the base for this one now. And I'm gonna make sure that our interior hole that we made is the same size that we're gonna make a little a little wall for in our new one, in our base plate, I should say. So the little hole inside is just about that large. So let's get our one pounder secured and let's center it up. Let's see. Coning up and pushing down. Just pretty much making a nice flat plate to start. So I use my knuckles to kind of flatten it out. So we want the total width of this to be the same width as our initial planter top. So right here is where we're gonna add our wall where we connect all of the interior string for the planter. Just like that. I'm gonna make sure it's the right width. A little thinner. There you go. Let's see. I'm go in and just smooth out this inside. So now we're gonna pull this plate, make it flat, just at the bottom, but we're gonna cup the edge like a bowl so it forms right around the outside of the planter top. Just like that. We're just gonna compress the area that we created as a plate. Something like this. Nice. I'm gonna make sure this wall is pretty straight as well. wire this right off. And then we'll put two holes right in the side of each of these walls so that it can thread up our string just to go right into the top of this planter. They look so cool. And do it all one more time. Make 
again. Hanging planter top. Let's center it up. That feels good already. Slow it down and open it up. Run all the way down to the bottom. And then we're gonna create from this actual hole in the bottom of this piece, create a ledge a quarter inch thick as our base and pull out, creating a flat surface on the inside as well. And then we're just going to spend a second here and compress this area. the wall right here shape this guy up compressing the lip each time let's do that one more time pushing some clay in from the bottom using our thumb and our sponge to push it towards the center pinching along the way all the way to the top Pressing the lip. Let's do it one more time. Take this little bit of clay, pull it all the way up. Compress the lip. Nice. Well, most forms that we make start as a cylinder, even though they end up very different. Uh, this way you can get your height and your walls are the same thickness from the bottom to the top. And then you can go in, now we're gonna go and we're gonna shape. I'm gonna push in while pushing out at the same time. We're gonna create our dome here really s slowly. see it kind of shaping up. I can feel my walls are the right thickness. We're going for about five inches. straight up hold of my breath when I do that. So I feel like I need to be as steady as possible. <laughs> so. We definitely hit the five inch, kind of a little bit big, but I think that's okay. Cut out that bit down there. Make sure our inside is nice and trim as well. And we're gonna go and wire this guy off. We're 
just gonna take that interior measurement of the hole that we created to make sure that we're right on par with our base plate. Got one pound for the bottom part. I'm gonna center it up. Just coning up, pushing it back down. Until it feels right, nice and centered. All right, I'm gonna push this down. I like to use my knuckles, create a nice plate shape. And then we're gonna use our measurement from the inside of our top to create our wall right here. I'm gonna pull a little bit out and push a little in, create a nice little tiny wall. Looks good, just needs to be straight. We wanna compress every part, so I'm gonna go in there and compress that center as well. Compress this edge. And the lip. We're going to pull out this area as a bottom of the plate and pull up a little wall on the edge. We want this to mimic the shape of the top of the hanging planter. Let's see what we can do. Perfect. It was just a little bit bigger than this original shape. Clean up all this water. Make sure our wall is nice and straight. You can press the bottom. wire this off. There we go. Nice. Should have like a nice counter. Sometimes I have to say nice. Next, we have to make six, six sets of butter bells. Um, so, let's see. would you want to pull a picture again? It's up to you. I don't have one on uh, hand. Uh, <laughs> Just save the tab. I like having the product right next to us. And we want to like, we're gonna make this whole top shelf a display of all our products. I mean, you're gonna get yourself sued if you keep calling it that. <sighs> yeah, you wanna go into that? <laughs> not, not yet. <laughs> oh, no, no. All right, it's called a butter dish, y'all. <laughs> Because if you call it a butterbell, you might get sued. So, our butter keepers, our butter dishes. 
They are two parts. Let me see. I really need to find this tool that I lost. Let's look around here for a second and see if I can find it. There's not that much space in this area, but sometimes I don't know how everything gets lost. It seeps down to the crevices. I see it. It's hiding. All right. Nice and special tool. I like that one the best. So I'm back. Let's center this guy up. Show y'all how we make the butter bells. Butter dishes. That sucks. All right, centered nice and quickly. We're gonna open it up like a cup, straight down to the bottom, leaving a quarter inch. And then opening our form up about three inches. Compressing this right now, we compress the bottom here. See. Then we're gonna pull this wall, 90 degree angle, straight up. up and we're gonna leave the lip a little thicker than the walls itself so we can add our resting spot for the lid so we're pretty much creating a type of jar Let's see. go underneath and give it another pull straight up to the center shape it up a little bit. Oh. Start with pretty straight walls here. Just want this base to have a nice bevel underneath of it. bevel here. Keep this straight all the way up. Then right now what we're going to do is we're going to split the lip that we created in half with a tool and just push down really softly until we create a ledge. So with some water, we're just going to take our tool right in the center, softly push down. using my other finger to hold and brace the wall. And that creates a nice ledge for our top to sit on. After this step, we're gonna go in and add a swirl in the middle, inside, and swirl the wall. Let's see, let's add the swirl. In the middle, just like that. And when we swirl this wall, we're gonna go really slow. One hand on the inside, and one tool on the outside. Softly, just push in all the way up and then hold it at the top. Just gonna make sure we're nice and straight here. Looks pretty good to me. So what we're gonna do to, me to measure this for our lid, is we're gonna measure the interior opening. This is where the butter keeper will sit, right there. And 
And I'm not gonna wire these off because once they're dry enough, they'll just pop right off and we trim the bottoms pretty heavily. So I'm gonna let these sit. They dry really nicely. Some over here. Now we're gonna make the top. So, it's the opposite of what we just did. So we are going to center it up, coning up and pressing down. Coning up, and then we're going to press down. very slowly. This is not feeling center at all. All right, let's get this centered. There it is. All right, so we're gonna leave a ledge on the outside. Come right in, pull up this wall. There we go. Leaving our ledge on the outside with a little compression, we opened our center, compressing our center, and pulling our wall straight up. Well, we want the width of this interior lid to be the same width that we took that measurement of. So, get this wall nice and straight. Check our width along the way. Looks good. Let's see here. We're just going to straighten this up. Compressing all of the facets. I like to keep this part a little thicker as well because it's the part that you actually use with the knife. Looks good. Now we're just going to make sure that we have the right height here as well. So our original form, gonna take a look at this and say, okay, it's our tool. We can go in and this is our height right here. So as long as we are shorter, we're good to go. Perfect. Pop this guy over here. And we end up with a lot of extra right here on the bottom. So I'm gonna cut some of that off. Just like that. One down, six to go. Let's see, let's clean this one off. Already flipped over. Well, all of our bats, our main bats that we use here are just cut pieces of MDF board. That was a quarter inch, an eighth of an inch thick and um, they work really well, but they do warp. So every time we use them, we kind of have to like flip them the other way so that it really attaches to the wheel head. But it was a good option and they work really well. 
We can make, I think we have like 60 of them. here, making another base for our butter dishes. up and pushing down. Feels good. All right, let's open it up. Finding the center, pushing down. So there's about a quarter inch left in the bottom and then pulling that base out towards ourselves. Pushing our wall up, and compressing the bottom. I'm gonna go for a pull right here, right towards the center. Yep. We want to keep our lip a little thicker for that ledge. Our lip. I want to go in and create this kind of sharp edge right here. So we have some more clay to pull up. It's our bevel. Go in and form our the lip for our lid. I'm just going to split our lip in half by pushing down right in the center. Keep the area wet. Bracing the outside wall with our other finger. go in and do our swirls. We have a little swirl on the inside. Makes it nice and cute. And we're going to swirl our exterior as well. Hold at the top. Pick up all the extra water. do our measurement right here for our interior wall. this 
off. pound of clay. Let's get it centered up. Coning up, pressing down. So we're going to push some of this clay right on the edge, straight down for our lid. We want our interior wall to be the same thickness that we took with these calibers. So we're gonna create a wall right here, pressing down in the middle, pulling towards ourselves and compressing. Pushing all of this back into the center, compressing the lid, the lip. One nice pull, straight up, compressing. Compressing every part, the outside, the corners, the inside, all the edges. But we want this to be this thick. Whoops, there we go. That looks good. Slow it down. Make sure we're straight. Last part we're gonna measure for this one is the height of the inside wall. With a tool, we just want to see where the bottom is, where the top of our lip is, and make sure that our lid won't touch the bottom. It's good to go. Take some of this extra clay off here. Number three. You think this will be our longest stream yet? No. <laughs> We're at 3.30. 3.30. What's our longest? This is 4.11. Well, let's see if we can break it. All right. All right. So we're making the wall of the exterior of the dish of the jar. Pulling up. Pressing the bottom. Go. Let's get one more nice pull. All the way up. Pressing the lip. some more height out of this one. That 
nice bevel down there, and then we're gonna pull up this extra clay. water out from there. Let's create our little facet for the lid. Just want to take our lip and split it in half, pushing down while bracing the exterior wall. Definitely need water on this part. We're not trimming anything, we're just pushing the clay where we want it to be. Nice. Let's get in there and do the little swirl. Little hidden swirl. And then swirl the outside. on up and then hold the top. It's going to go in with the sponge. Clean it up. Water out. Smooth it all down. Go. Let's grab our measurement right here. It is the same. That's great. It's like a little spider, it's so tiny. Feel bad. Move it over there. right in the center. We're making the lid. So we just gotta center this guy up. Coating up, pushing down. that little ledge right here and then go in and open this up creating a wall compressing the center and pulling this wall straight up and check our width here Looking good. I just want to get this nice and straight. One more time, looking good. Then we're gonna check our height. Just grab our jar, this little tool, see our depth, and you can just measure it with your finger. We just want this part to be shorter. We're looking good. All this 
slurry out of here. Get some of this water out from inside of here as well. Coning straight up, palms of our hands to push it back down, right into center. We're gonna open this up, and about a quarter inch on the bottom, pulling it towards ourselves and then compressing that base that we created. shaping our wall. We want it to be concave, so we're going to push it into the center. Go. I'm going to give it one nice pull right towards the middle, compressing the lip. And keep the lip a little thicker as well. That's where our lid's going to sit. Make it into a jar. some of this clay out from underneath. Pull that right on up. Compress the lip every single time. Get all that water out from in there. So just so we can see what we're looking at here. All right, let's be a little bit taller. This bevel more prominent. <gasps> Did you see that? Oh, how did that even happen? It came straight flat off of the. Th ah! <laughs> All right, here we go. That was insane, actually. Alright, round two. <laughs> Let's get this centered again. Alright, opening it up. Pressing the bottom. Pushing all our clay towards the center. Creating a nice concave wall all the way up. Another pull. Keeping the lip a little thicker than the walls so we can have a lid a little space, a lip to put the lid. We are going right back in. Let's get another pull all the way up. Up. 
straight up. Nice bevel right there. Just gonna get this water out and then we're gonna create a little divot for our lid. Right here at the top. I'm just going to take the lip and split it right in half. Pressing down right in the middle while bracing the wall with our other hand. Water. this little secret swirl and then we're gonna add the swirl on the wall so bracing the inside using our tool just slowly pull it up and then hold right at the top Our measurement right there. Pop this guy off. Go. Another bat right on there. Gonna make the inside lid where all the butter sits. I'm gonna center it. Up. Just gonna cone up and press down right in the center until we get all of the clay right where we want it to be. Do that as many times as you, as you need to. We're gonna press down right in the center and pull towards ourselves, creating quarter inch base compressing our area. I'm gonna leave a little lip right here for the lid. We're gonna pull up this wall. Compressing, pulling up a wall, compressing the lip. See what we're looking at here. It's a little too thick. So we're gonna collar it in. We're using triangulation. We need one point in the back and two on the sides, and we're just gonna slowly pull all the way, all the way to the top. Pushing in right towards the center. This is collaring. So. Then compress your lip. Check our new width. Now we're a little too thin, so we're gonna even it out. Perfect. I'm just gonna straighten this whole thing up.
super straight wall. The right thickness, we're good. Now we're gonna look for the height. So, check the depth of our jar. Using any tool, straight to the bottom. Grab the depth with your finger. And over here, you want it to be a little shorter. It is a little shorter, but I think it's a little too close, so I'm gonna take a little bit off. Same. But we fire these pieces together, even when they're glazed. So ideally, no glaze touches the other glaze. But when everything is melting together, you don't want anything to touch. So, just have to make sure we have clearance here. There we go. Take some of this off here. Move some of this stuff around. Let's see. Let's get right in here. Okay. One, two, three, four. We are on number five out of six. Let's get it done. Center this up. Open it up. Leaving a quarter inch on the bottom. Pressing, compressing. pushing all of our clay towards the center as we make pulls in our wall for the height. Okay, let's make another pull. Straight up, compress the lip, keeping it thick. Do it again. Pushing that clay in so we have some to pull up. Create our bevel, our wall, pull right up. Leaving the top a little thicker. The wall's nice and straight. Go in and add the ledge where our lid is gonna sit. So, slowly we're gonna split our the lip here right in half with the tool. Just pressing down really slowly, holding the wall with our other hand. It's creating a little ledge. Yeah, a little bit of water right there. our little swirl on the inside and then add our exterior swirl Just all the way up and then hold at the top go in and just take out some of this water
And we're gonna get our measurement here. Perfect. Very nice. All the slurry. make the lid. So, center this up one more time. Pushing the clay onto the bat. Coning up. Pressing back down. Pushing it back down. All right, we're gonna leave a little ledge right here where our lid's gonna sit inside of our cup. And then we're gonna open up the middle. Compressing, making sure we're still concave here with our wall. Press that inside. Let's give it one nice pull. Keeping this pretty thick. Go. Let's check our width. Looking good. Let's give it another pull. Check our depth. Straight in and grab the measurement with our fingers. Make sure we're lower. We are lower. All right. Just straighten this out really well. Nice corner down there. too much slurry in there. Grab that. One more butter butter dish. Center this guy up. Cone up. Press down. Let's do that again. From two corners, press in towards the center, pulling all your clay up, coning straight up. And from one corner, straight to the center, pushing down slowly. There it is. All right. I'm gonna open it up, 
pressing right down in the center so we're a quarter inch left at the bottom and then pulling it towards our body opening it up compressing always compressing let's push this wall right on over making it concave let's give it one good pull right here all the way up compressing the lip let's do it one more time some clay from the bottom from the outside just gonna pull that bulge right up to the top and compress the lip when you get there Create this bevel right here and pull up from the top of the bevel. Go. And take out all the water from the inside. Slow this down a little bit, get our bevel nice. Shape up the edges. All right, let's go in and add that little bit for the lip. So just some water right there. I'm gonna split the lip right in half. Pressing down really softly so we have the ledge that we want. Alright, I'm going to go in and add the swirl right at the bottom. We're going to swirl this side up. So pressing in with our tool and bracing the back wall with our two fingers, slowly pull up a swirl and then holding it right at the top. Just gonna clean up all of our edges. measurement. There it is. We actually need to make one more one pounder because we had a flyer. Lost one. So let's do that. Open up our bag right here. rip off a piece that I feel like is about a pound and try it on our scale. Let's see, our scale's kind of hiding right now. But one point two. All right, we got it. Just wedge that right on up. All right, we're making the lid to our last butter bell here. So we're just gonna center this up. We 
I'm gonna leave a little bit right here for our lip. Go in and open this form up, leaving a quarter inch on the bottom. Pulling up our wall towards the center and compressing the lip, compressing the inside. Check it out, what we got here. It's looking really perfect. So I'm just gonna clean it up, straighten it out. Let's check out the depth. to grab the depth and just make sure we're below it. We are. Good. Take some of this extra off right here. Kind of tired. Let's see if we can get a few more pieces done. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Maybe we can get ten four inch planters done today. I'm gonna go get some more water for our bucket right here. And then we can lay out our clay. It's all sludge. <laughs> oh, yeah, fresh water. That's nice. Everything was so clean three hours ago. Now it's a mess again. <laughs> All right, let's see. We need 10 two pound balls of clay. I think I'm gonna go for this fresh bag of clay right here. Let's see what we can get out of this. Like our regular scale is working again. That's nice. Chop 
this up. I'm just gonna double check and make sure my measurement is correct. Oh, I said two pounds. Let's see if we're right. Two pounds, four ounces. What well, wasn't right? All right, let's see. It's about three pounds right there. There it is. Two pounds, four ounces. Two, two. Two pounds, six ounces, two, five, two, three. Two, four, six, two, four, one, two, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. some clay out of this bag. Let's see what we got in here. There we go, two, four. supposed to be. All right, we're just going to wedge these guys up. shapes. All right, where 
Where are our towels? These are definitely getting dry already. Let's see. hours 13 minutes well we officially surpassed officially the longest stream oh that's nice it feels like the longest stream <laughs> trying to get to five hours at least yeah hell yeah all right be cool to see how long it takes us to throw 10 four inch planters in general a good uh, concept of time. Let's see. Arms are tired. <laughs> Sheesh. It's not very cold. It's okay. That is a nice workout. Move some of the stuff around. We have a spot to put these 10 planters. Nice. All right. So, four inch by four inch planters. We cannot use our small MDF boards for these. They're not big enough. So we do have some of these plastic, I think they're six by sixes, these plastic bats. So they stay just as well on our chamois. We're gonna use these instead. Here, we're gonna get our measurement with our calibers for four inches. 11% shrinkage rate. So, four inches right there. It's 12 and it 
looks good. nice and secure to our bat right here. Pop it on there. Right. I'm going to center this guy up. Coning right up. I have two pressure points and then pushing back down from the top. Bracing with your other hand all the way down. Let's do that again. Coming up. Right back down. So we want our inside to be about four inches here. We want to leave a little ledge here so we can do our attached drainage base. And we're going to open this up, leaving the quarter inch on the bottom and pulling it slowly towards yourselves, opening the form up. Compressing the bottom. Get this base to be four inches. Let's see what we can do here. Do some extra compression right in here. Push all of this towards the center. Start with a good foundation here to get our height. Do one pull right towards the center. Slow this down a little bit too. Compressing the lip. Grab a little bit more, pull it right on up. Let's see what our height is looking like here. We are spot on. All right, slow it down. Press our side. Let's get all this water out. Let's work on this width. I'm just gonna kind of pull it so it's the same width as the bottom that we created. We want the inside to be four inches so it can fit a four inch planter. If that's what you're buying, let's see. Ooh. 
There it is. Four by four, perfect. All right. I'm gonna add the little ledge here, which is our attached base. I'm just gonna push this clay up from the side while pushing down with my finger. Compressing that area, creating a wall. So this starts the opposite that we would usually do. So we have to pull this kind of out, convex, and then we're gonna push it together. So we're gonna give it a little bit of height here. And then we're gonna go in with our tool, compress our base. And then we're gonna collar this back in. Just gonna go in here, a little extra compression, get all that water out. And we're gonna straighten up our wall. There it is. And once these are dry enough, we add little drainage holes on the inside so the water can just drain right into this base plate. The last thing that we do is we add a little swirl on the inside. A little liquid swirl. These we do have to wire off, so. To one swift motion, ideally, get that off. There we go. Set these up right over here. Get this secure to our bat. I'm just gonna push down first. And then we're gonna cone it up. Let's cone up the whole thing there's any kind of bubbles in there, I want to pop them out right now. Slowly push this back down. Push down a corner here, push down the ledge so we have some clay saved for our attached base. We're gonna open this up. Pressing down till we're about a quarter inch from the bottom, and then we're gonna pull out towards our bodies to open up our base. this wall up. Don't want it to get too disfigured. There we go. All right, we want our base to start at four inches, so I'm going to open it up a little bit more.
get all this water out. Actually, so like this clay is really tough right now, like it's a little dry. So all these balls, I'm gonna give them like a quick dip in water so they can absorb some water while they're just chilling here. This way, hopefully they're a little less tough when we go to throw them in a second. Um, just a quick dunk. Still gonna wrap them in our wet towels, create kind of like a greenhouse effect here. There we go. Back to it. Pull up our wall, we're still moving it towards the center. Don't want it to be straight up and down perpendicular yet, but get our height first. We got our height, now let's get our width. Just gonna pull it out to match the base that we created. need to be a little thicker, so let's keep going. Perfect. All right, let's add this side drainage. Just gonna push down, push up, pinching this little wall right here. I'm just gonna give it a nice little pull. Get that water out. And with our tool, we're gonna go in and flatten that little bit of a base. We're gonna collar this right in. Collar it right up. Make sure it's nice and straight. Create our bevel at the bottom. look and make sure it's actually super straight looks good all right add a little swirl on the inside helps with the drainage as well and we're gonna chop this guy off there it is Um, 
two down. Smush them, smush them. Get this centered up. We're making four inch planters with attached bases. Oh, we're working with two pounds, four ounces of clay. And we're just centering, collaring, coning this guy right up, pushing it right back down. Nice and center on our wheel. Go. And then for the attached base, we just pull a little bit of clay down to the edge. We leave it right there. We're gonna come back to that later. We're gonna open this up, create a four inch base, maybe about a quarter inch of clay at the bottom. Do that, pulling that towards ourselves, opening it up really slowly. Pressing the bottom along the way. Let's see. Let's be a little more open. Push that out. Just fix up our wall a little bit. I'll spend a second here compressing the bottom. Getting the slurry out. We want the bottle to be four inches, so it's gonna be a little thicker than this. There it is, all right. Keeping it concave till we get our height. So we're gonna go and do a pull. Straight up towards the center. Compress the lip. Get out that water. Do it again. Create a little bump, bulb. Pull it all the way up. small pull. I want these to be four inches by four inches. Got it. Straighten the whole thing out. Nice. We're gonna open up this side wall right here. Just pushing down, creating a base. The same width as our interior. And from the edge, we're just gonna pinch the side wall up a little tiny bit. Compressing a lip. Get that water out. 
take this tool, do a little extra compression right here, flattening it out, and then pushing in, collaring up our wall. Just grab a little bit of that extra bevel at the bottom too. Just make sure it looks good. that little swirl in the middle. Nice. Let's wire it off. Straight through, one sweep. Let's set this over here. Is not where I want it to be. There we go. Let's really attach that to the wheel head and cone it up. Push it down. Do it again. Centering this guy up. Now pull part of this down for a ledge that we're gonna create into our attached base at the end. Let's open this up right down in the center. You can feel when you're almost at the bottom, leave a quarter inch, pull it open towards yourself, all the way, four inches. Right. We're gonna compress this base. So this should be four inches. Let's see where we're at. It needs to be a little wider. Let's keep going. There. Yes. There we go. Make this concave again and do our pulls. Straight up towards the center. Pressing the lip. Gonna do it again. Press the lip. more 
more clay right down there. Just pushing a little bit from this area. Try to give it one more pull up here. It's a little wobbly, so we're just going to go in and trim that right off. Let's get all this water out from inside of here. and the width we definitely need a little bit more of both let's see what we can do Pressing the lip. That's about as thick as it needs to be, so let's pull it out a little bit. Let's see what we can do down here. we go. That's good. Okay, we're working on our attached base. Just going to go under here and push our little edge, our wall out. Create a nice small little wall and then compress this bottom. We're going to go in and collar this back where it needs to be. Our tool, get up under there and straighten it out a little bit more. Let's give this one good look. Make sure we're straight. Looks good to me. We're going to add the swirl in the middle. Flatten this lip a little bit. Make sure I didn't disrupt it. Oh. Let's get it wired off. I go down here now. Gross. Cold, old, warm coffee. Just centering up two pounds of clay.
All right. Let's see. Get this top pretty flat. I'm going to section off a little bit right here. This will be for our attached base. I'm going to open it up, finding the center, pulling towards yourselves, leaving a quarter inch on the bottom. Compress that bottom. Don't want any cracks issues. Right. A little bit more. back in. Let's do a pull Go right up towards the center. Let's do that again. Bring all that clay right up towards the center. Pressing the lip. Let's see. All right, so a lot of clay to go. Keep it concave. Let's go ahead, do another pull. Right up into the middle, slowly, holding at the top and compressing the lip. All right, let's see how tall we are. Yep, four inches tall, so let's just get our width. So we're not pulling anything right now. We're just shaping, trying to pull out, push out the walls until they reach our base diameter of four inches. Get all the extra stuff out from inside. Make sure it looks good. I push down right on the edge here our exterior wall for our drainage. Kind of create a pinching motion here. We're gonna pull up this wall. And then we're gonna use a tool and compress the inside right here. And then we're going to collar this back into place. Let's 
at the little swirl on the inside. There's a little too much uh, slurry in here still. Let me get it out. There we go. Let's wire this off. Okay. That's five, so we're halfway to being done with this. What are you thinking? Uh, it's up to you. What time is it? Or how long have we been doing it? Um, 4.54. Wow. All right, well, definitely got to get to at least five, so a few more minutes, but I'm going to keep going with these. I want to, I'm going to get these done, so let's get them done. Got five more. Let's see how fast we can get them done. Power hour. through these four inch planters. I'm gonna flatten this out. I'm gonna leave a little bit down here for our attached base later. I'm gonna open this up. Right towards us. Compress. right up towards the center. Do it again. Nobody saw that. <laughs> oh, but I saw that. I'll tell you what. Let's collar this right back in. Can't see anymore. Let's see. Y'all can still see that. Let's see what we're looking at here. Four by four, we're good. Let's get this little attached base rolling. Pinched up. Oh, that's not good. Let's push that back down. I'm gonna connect that back together. That's fixable. I'm gonna hit this with some compression. 
right here. Same with the lip. And we're gonna pull that back up. Softly pinch it. There you go. Compressing. Shaping it right back up. All right. Get that bevel. Make sure that's straight and our edges here are nice and straight. All the way up. I'm gonna hit this with a swirl on the inside. One more compression on the outside. Seven. Definitely got clay all over my face. <laughs> I can feel it. <laughs> Love getting messy over here. <laughs> Four more. fighting me now, so. Let's see. There we go. Let's bring it together. Coning up. Pushing down, centering. Save a little bit right here for later. Let's open this up. And for four inches. towards the center, keep it concave, and do it again, towards the center, collar this in a little bit more, I'm not ready to flare out just yet, so let's do another pull.
we got the height. Now let's just straighten this out and see where we're at. to the base here. A little more. Get a good look at this. Yep, that's it. Let's get our little attached base pulled up. Compress down right here in that middle area. Use a tool to compress as well. And we're going to collar it in. Compress the lip. Take away some of this extra. Create a bevel. Keep it straight. We're gonna add the swirl on the inside. There it goes. Let's wire it off. Number eight. Centering, coning up, pressing everything back down so we can get it right in the center where we want it. Push down some clay right here, save it for later. I'm gonna open this up right in the center. Pulling it towards yourself, looking for four inches for our base here. Gonna compress all along the way the base flat and pushing all the particles together so that we don't have any cracks. It's looking good. Push all of our clay towards the center, shaping it up. Grab all that clay and pull it right towards the middle. Compressing the lip. I'm going to do it again. Up and right towards the center. Compress the lip. Hmm. 
Oh my goodness. Got a trunker over there. Trunker. Height's good. Let's just get this the right width. This is what we're gonna do. Just pulling it out, trying to line it up best we can. A little wobbly. Even that out. Inches. Let's go ahead and pull out our attached base wall. Just gonna push down, pinch to the side, just pinch up this little tiny wall, compress the lip. Gonna go in with our tool and compress the interior as well. Take away this outside area, create a little bevel, and keep our wall. Nice and straight. Let's go in and create our swirl. There it is. Let's wire this off. Two more. Let's clean off this a little bit. In like danger. We want the chamois to be wet, but not full of slurry, just water. Collar it up. Push it back down. Not too bad. Let's get it the right shape. Kind of flat right here. Slow it down. Let's push our little extra flap down here for later. Let's open it up. So we find the center. We press down softly. So we're about a quarter inch in the bottom and then we pull it open slowly. We compress our base. We want this area to be four inches wide. Now let's 
let's see what we got here. We got our caliber set to four inches. It is looking good. Let's go ahead and we're gonna pull this up and towards the center. Compress the lip at the end. Do it one more time. some clay bring it right on up try to straighten it out this last pull oh I heard a meow <sighs> my little boy a little good guy what's he doing Press this outside edge, pinch, pulling up this wall. I'm gonna go in with our tool, compress this a little bit more, and then we're gonna collar in our wall that we made, compressing the lip. Straighten it out, create a bevel. And we're just gonna double check our whole form here, make sure it's nice straight, exactly how we want it to be. Let's go in and create our swirl. One more. Clean this one off a little bit. Hey Nick, there's a short that people are doing where it's like, um, this initial has to buy you something something. Have you seen that one? No, say it again. It's like somebody draws like an initial in their art and they say this initial has to buy you or give you a gift of something something. Mm. So it's like, this initial would have to buy you handmade pottery. All right, how do you want to do it? You want to do it? How? How? Oh, so I would just, there's like a song that you put to it, but I'm not sure. But I'll just like make like a like a mess here and then stop the wheel and make an initial. All right, I'll just, um, I'll write down the time. And okay. Just do it. Then the initial would be like M. You see that? No, I can't. No. That sucks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Done skis. <laughs> oh. All right, let's do it. Last one. Last one. All right. Procrastination station. Let's get it done. Uh, 
collar this right up. Oh, I heard a bubble pop. Coning all the way to the top. Pressing back down, centered. Going for flat, flat area right here. And we're gonna push some clay off to the side. Here. That'll be for our attached base for later. Go into the center here and open it up. Leaving a quarter inch worth of clay at the bottom, opening our form up, create our walls. We want four inches to be the width of our base. So we're gonna compress along the way, open it up to four inches. this back in, compress a little more. Let's do one pull towards the center, press the lip, get another one in there. this clay down here right on up straight up all the way to the top compress the lip all right Let's see our height here a little taller Let's see what we can do Press our edge and pinch up our side wall for our attached base. And press the lip. We go in and compress our base as well. And then we're gonna collar this in till it's straight. Grab our tool, create a little bevel at the bottom. This is nice and straight. Come in here and straighten this out as well. Let's make sure our width is right. Yep, I got it. So, last little swirl on the inside. There it is. It's wired off. Okay, Nick, we're, we're good. We did it all, everything we could do. All right. 
Let's just stay on for a couple minutes here. All right. So, what did we do? How, how did we uh, manage today? We did a lot today. So, we made all 12 mini spoon rests, plus those logo ones that we needed to make, remake, for Operation Lola. Made two hanging planters, two matcha bowls, two V60s, six butter bells, which are each two pieces, so that's 12 pieces. And we made four cheese plates and 10 four inch planters. How many pieces is that all together? Oh my gosh. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. <laughs> 46 pieces. Is that it? I think it's 46. Nice. It's a lot. 46 pieces in five hours? What does that average us? Ah. <laughs> Dude, just do 50 too pieces. Tired to figure yeah. this out. That's cool though. Oh, GG's. GG's. <laughs> so what's the what's this plan for the rest of the day? Today? Yeah, we're gonna chill out for like an hour or something. Yeah. Figure out what we're gonna do for dinner, chill out, and then maybe, I mean, I wanna hop on and stream play Halo too. <laughs> Well, we need uh, some stuff before we do that. Hmm. We gotta get uh, another headphone. Yeah, we do need to get Situation. another headphone jack. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll run out to Walgreens. Uh, I don't think it's gonna. No. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Okay. Um, yeah. But yeah, so I'm not gonna shout it on stream because it might not happen tonight. But true. Yeah, you can check out our other channel. We just put up a video of us picking blueberries, that was which so was fun. fun. It was awesome. And um, so, yeah, anything else you want to add? Um, I want to say that everybody should comment and subscribe to win our mug because we're only about 50 subs away from giving away a mug. So we got this freshy fresh mug. My hands are totally disgusting right now. But... Here she is, giving away this mug to one person, somebody who can subscribe to our channel and then comment on our related video. We got it in the description below, our 1,000 sub giveaway. So when we hit 1,000 subs, this mug is going to somebody absolutely free, shipping on us anywhere in the world. So not only America, anywhere you live, we will get this mug to you. All right. Appreciate everyone watching, thanks for tuning in. Um, yeah, I don't know what about. We're gonna stream again this week, later this week, I think. Yep. So. And then we got a market on Saturday. We got a market on Saturday, potential market on Sunday. It's supposed to be like 90 degrees that day. Oh. Well, so. then we're definitely going to the beach after. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Till next time. Peace out. <laughs> <laughs>